Hey, it's Hal from Light again with part two of the adjustment brush here in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. We left to talking about fine tuning our mask. We've done brightness, saturation. At this point, we're ready to go on and just do another mask if we need it. The way we do that is to hit New, Program with our effect drop down. For this one, I'll use brightness again, but then just bring that brightness up because I always like to overdo it. What I'm looking to do here is I'm going to take the foreground and make it just a little bit brighter. Once I have the effect programmed and overdone, I make sure my brush is configured appropriately, which it is, and then I'll go in and paint the effect. I know where I paint based on the effect itself, or once again, I could hit the O key for the overlay and use that as a guide as to where I need to paint. When I'm complete with the mask, we can hit the O key again to turn the overlay off, and then we go and fine tune by grabbing brightness and bringing it down just a little bit to something that is more appropriate for the image itself. Once we're finished with our two masks, all we need to do to go back to the rest of Lightroom is hit close and we're ready to continue our workflow. If at any point you want to go in and modify those masks, either the mask themselves or the effect that we've programmed in, click back up into the adjustment brush and notice that you're going to have your two control pins. By clicking on the control pin, that will enable the specific mask and you can go in and move around the sliders. All in all, very, very slick functionality. To delete a mask, all we need to do with the control pin active is hit delete. And I'm going to do that for both of mine in order to show one more bit of functionality. The one thing that we, actually two things we haven't talked about are auto mask and the eraser. So I'll look at the auto mask function first. I'm going to set up a new mask. I'm going to program my brush with brightness and I'll take it down to minus 200 to overdo it. I'll configure the brush just as we had it before, but this time I enable Auto Mask. And what Auto Mask does is it looks underneath the center of the brush itself and this ascertains what color and texture is there. And says, all right, well, if House clicked onto this color and texture, he probably only wants to paint here. It works like this, and I'm going to turn on my overlay. If I start to paint, notice that my brush goes below the horizon, but it is not painting below the horizon because when we get to that line of contrast between the mountains and the sky, we have a change in the color and texture of where I had originally clicked. So this is very, very cool masking technology. Not necessarily perfect at this point. Notice I get a little bit of overspray there, but not a problem. In fact, many times you're going to get the most accurate selection by getting a little bit of overspray and then invoking the eraser. To use the eraser, I click onto the eraser. We'll see that it's also a brush-based tool. I can modify size, feather, and flow. And I have the auto mask also. So taking my eraser with auto mask, I'll come in and erase everything down below that line of contrast that is the mountain sky transition. When I'm finished with auto mask, I always turn it off. And then I'll come back up to the brush and continue my effort. Of course, notice I just did the exact same thing I did before, and we're going to need to go in and fix that again with the eraser. But a fairly nice selection. I'll go to the race, auto mask, and fix it. Turn the auto mask off, back to the brush, disable auto mask because I don't need it anymore, and now I'll finish the rest of the mask that I have here up in the sky. I got a little tedious, so I'll make the brush bigger and go a little bit faster across the sky. When the mask is complete, we just hit overlay, and you see that I have in there a really nice selection right along the edge of the mountains. We should also see is for most digital photographers, especially nature, landscape, wildlife folks, this really isn't the way to go because we want to be soft and subtle. And that nice precise selection along the horizon isn't soft nor subtle even if we go in and fine tune this. But that's how our auto mask functionality works. The eraser always there for us whether we use auto mask or not. As we said before it's either clicking onto eraser or we could hold down the alt or option key the universal subtract from key for most Adobe products. That is our adjustment brush inside of Lightroom so let's take a look at that same thing in Adobe Camera Raw. I'll bring open the bridge 
and I'm going to launch the same image into Adobe Camera Raw by clicking on to Control R or Command R on the Mac, which launches strictly ACR and not Photoshop proper. I'll take care of all my universal adjustments first, and then when I need the adjustment brush, I can go up into the toolbar and find the adjustment brush itself via this small icon here or the keyboard shortcut K. With the adjustment brush, we'll notice right away it's very, very similar to what we had inside of Lightroom, so we can accelerate this portion of the discussion. Over on the right side, we see New, Add, or Erase, where New and Add apply to the mask, and then Erase, there's our eraser. We have Exposure through Color sliders, as well as our color swatch for the color itself, and then we have our brush controls just like we did before. Size, we can use the slider or the left and right bracket keys. Feather, the slider, shift left and right bracket keys. We have flow available to us and density. Just like before, I tend to leave my density up at 100%. Now, Auto Mask, it does the exact same function as we had within Lightroom. And Show Mask is just like the mask overlay. The only addition that we have is a small color swatch, and that allows us to program what color we want the overlay mask to be. So let's go ahead and use the adjustment brush with an Adobe Camera Raw workflow. First thing we do, we launch the adjustment brush like we're already in. Next, New. We need to program the brush, and our recommendation is you program the brush by clicking onto either the minus or the plus of the effect that you're looking to use. So I want to use brightness on this guy. I'll click minus brightness. That takes all of the other sliders and sets them to zero and then brings the brightness to either minus 25 or to the last position where I left the slider. I always like to overdo it, so I'll take it down to minus 200. Now it's time to configure the brush. Looking at the brush itself, notice that the size is shown by the same circles just like we had before. We have a cross here in the middle, a hard circle which denotes the 100%, and then a dashed black and white circle which shows me the extent of the feather just like we had before. So inside of Lightroom it was a bright circle and a little bit darker circle. Here we have black circle and then black and white. Once everything is programmed I'll just come in and start to make my adjustments. If I want to see the mask, in this case I could either click show mask or I could use the keyboard shortcut which is the Y key. So I come in, make my adjustment, just like we did before. Once the mask is complete, or the mask is complete, turn off the mask overlay by hitting the Y key again, and then we fine tune by dragging our brightness slider to the appropriate position. With a mask, notice we have that with a control pin that looks a lot more like a pin here. It is a small pin symbol, and it's active, we know, because it has a black dot in the center. Then we just fine tune this mask. We could go brightness, saturation, anything else we wanted to do. If we wanted to make an adjustment to this, we could potentially click the eraser and then go in and erase certain parts of our mask if we wanted to. If we wanted to add a new mask, much like we did before, click on new, program your brush again. I'm going to go with brightness plus, remember that resets everything else, sets so our brightness. I'll overdo it configure the brush and then come in and do your painting to build the mask itself. If you wanted the overlay you could just hit the Y key and it would be there for you but once the mask is complete fine-tune and that's gonna finish up your adjustment brush use. When you're finished all you need to do is click onto any of the other tools up here in the toolbar. I like to hit the H key or go up and hit the hand tool and that takes me out of the adjustment brush. If I need to go back and, and try and modify anything again, click on the adjustment brush or hit the letter K one more time. There's our control pins ready to go, making one active by clicking on it and then adjusting as necessary. That is a quick and dirty of the adjustment brush in Adobe Camera Raw as well as Lightroom. Please, jo please join us tonight online and we'll be talking more about the adjustment brush and how we would use that inside of our workflow. Have a great day.